Hi, I'm Jake Polonsky, BSC. I'm a director of photography and the co-director of the short film Down Not Out. I'm not a one-person shooter kind of DP. My usual work is in commercials and high-end TV shows. But I had a film I wanted to make and I was interested to see how using this new camera would affect that. My relationship with Fujifilm goes back a long way. I won the Fujifilm Scholarship Student Competition back in 96 and I was a long-time user of their film stocks before we even entered the digital age. More recently, I've been commissioned by them to make a few films to showcase the medium format GFX 100 camera. But this was quite a different proposition. A small mirrorless camera, not much different in size and weight from an X-T4. In fact, I'd used my own X-T3 on some of the concert footage sections of the Sparks Brothers documentary which I shot for Edgar Wright. So I was already aware that the fourth generation of this sensor had impressive movie making capabilities. On that project in particular, I was amazed at the low noise level at quite high ISOs. In this case, I was less interested in autofocus and workflows though, and more interested in looking in more depth at the fifth generation sensor in this new camera. How would it perform in terms of resolution, contrast, latitude, colour depth and sharpness? I had a project I wanted to make, and it seemed like the ideal opportunity to put this X-H2S camera into what is for me a real-world scenario. With this project, could I achieve similar results to those I might get from the kind of camera I'm normally using at work, like Arri Alexas, REDS, or the Sony Venice? Is this even a fair comparison to draw with a camera at this price point? How would making it on this camera affect the image quality? We were using my vintage Cook Cinema Primes and a custom PL2X mount adapter, so I was taking the camera a little out of its comfort zone and into a different place from working with lenses tailor-made for the system. In the brief time I had with the camera and its native lenses, the autofocus system looked excellent and was amazingly quiet, but this film is not the thing to watch. That's your primary focus. Pardon the pun. What we did do was build this little camera out into a shooting form that made sense to me and my DP Richard Mott with a wireless video system via the now full-size HDMI connection and recording 422 10-bit externally to an Atomos Ninja 5 Plus in ProRes HQ, which for my editor and post company made the most sense in terms of compression, file size, quality and ease of use. In our one-day shoot at York Hall in London, the camera performed brilliantly. We experimented with taking the ISO up to 2000, which was still entirely acceptable, and we even took a look at 2500, but we didn't need to go that far in the end. One of the most important things for me was looking at latitude and the new F-Log2 Gamma really did seem to have the 14 stops of latitude that kept highlights under control while also retaining tons of shadow detail. Not dissimilar to what I'd expect from Ari's Log C format. Using external power, I had no problems running the camera the entire day with no overheating. And in grading, we had all the color information I would hope to have, and no unpleasant noise or compression artifacts. Most importantly for me, no one who's watched the movie comments on the look other than to say it looks great. So as far as I'm concerned, that's a job done for this new camera. It's created images that look great. I'm extremely proud to have had the opportunity to make this film in order to help demonstrate that.